It is Thursday, April 4th, 2024. This is another edition of Baseball Today. That is my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose, producer Dan, along for the ride as well. Is that at least a pen you're pointing in my direction or a pickaxe? Or I can never tell what it is you're trying to point at me. Today, it's a pen. I kind of just grab whatever I have here. And someone asked me, like, what's up with the pencil and the hat, bro? And I don't really have a good explanation for it. I think it's like a costume for me. It's like I'm Coach Trev, and I feel like I'm like a coach on the sidelines of an NFL game, like writing stuff down. I got to have my pen handy. So, boom. Do coaches do this? I'm going to throw this out to you. Do you remember which NFL coach of the last 15 to 20 years used to stick a number two pencil in his head? I think there were two of them, so I would accept either answer. One is a very recent head coach within the last five years. Another one was within the last, like, 10 to 15. Did Kyle Shanahan used to do it? No. Matt Cliff Patricia. Kingsbury. No. Oh, Patricia, Patricia, for sure. Yeah, who was with the Lions before Dan Campbell took over. And yep. then Mike Tice of the Minnesota Vikings, who's probably best known for illegally selling his Super Bowl tickets. That's a great thing to be known for. <laughs> uh, used to stick a number two pencil in his head. So there you go, everybody. Okay. A little, yeah. Uh, we start off with a tip of the cap to people near and dear to John Boy Media's heart. That's right. The Rose Rotation duo of Miguel Rojas and Tyler Glass now leading the Dodgers to a sweep over the Giants. That's right. Miggy Rowe, his second homer of the year. And Glass now, I know he wasn't happy with the way things finished, but still gave up only three runs in six innings, struck out seven along the way. Uh, it's very funny. I've got a little skit going with Miggy Rowe. After his first homer, I texted him, 2024 home run counter, Miggy Row one, Shohei zero. Ooh. And then last night I said, Miggy Row two, one. So I think he appreciates that. I think he does. He, I mean, he is such a stud. I love whenever he has success on the field, which is quite often. So yeah. good for him. Uh, we call that leadership for Miguel Rojas, just oh. to let everybody know. Uh, speaking of Shohei, he did finally get on the board. So, too, did Aaron Judge. So, too, did Jordan Alvarez. So, three big dudes finally putting the ball over the wall on Wednesday. Let's start with Shohei, since it was his first one ever as a Los Angeles Dodger. Were you watching this live when it happened? I was. It was awesome. He pulled that thing, and you knew it was gone. When he hits the ball, I mean, it sounds different. It's like a little, it's like a little louder than everybody else. We really haven't heard that loud, loud sound yet from Shohei, and, and last night you got it. Yeah. Uh, it was interesting how they treated it. It was like, oh, here it is. You know, it was like the biggest thing that ever happened in Dodger history, which I understand. You know, listen, he's the shiny new toy, $700 million, making the move up the five. And, oh, by the way, yeah, he's now a Los Angeles Dodger. But let's not treat it like it's his first one ever here in the States. You know they're going to do that for, like, almost everything. Wait till he gets on the mound. First sure. strikeout. Oh, but here is his first strikeout True. in Dodger blue. I mean, this is this is what they paid him for, that he is the guy. Like you said, I mean, he is the face. Or so I'm one of the faces. How many faces do the Dodgers have? It's like, a, it's like a Mount Rushmore. They could just keep rotating them. Fair. I was doing research for one of the questions on the show today. Like Yamamoto signed through 2035, Shohei through 2034. Like I can't even think that far ahead whatsoever. And these guys will be playing baseball. It's crazy. So uh, the question having to deal with those three monsters is who's going to hit the most homers this year? I do like this question. I think there is kind of a simple answer. I think it's Aaron Judge. Um, he just has the track record of hitting homers, and he is just a very, very good hitter. That can, I mean, all these guys. I mean, these are three of the best hitters in the game. So just looking at past stats, I mean, Shohei's gotten the 40s a couple times. Jordan settles in right around mid-30s every single year, but Judge has the ability to hit. I mean, he hit 62 homers, dude. I mean, it's like, how could you not pick a guy like Aaron Judge? He's – those guys are big, too, but Aaron Judge is bigger and stronger. And I don't know, man. His swing is just geared more towards the home run. Now, I, I would say this. If Shohei was to have a chance, it, it would be this year. I think when he's just DHing, where his legs are going to continuously be fresh, I think I think we might see a career high in home runs for Shohei this year. Uh, but I'm going to pick Judge. I do have a story about the Jordan um, homer. I'm sitting there. You saw me. Grilling up those tri-tips yesterday. Yeah. Those were really yummy, right? Mm -hmm. And I had the Astros game on, 
And your dom was already three for three or something like that. And I was with a couple of my buddies and I said, oh, this is like one of the best hitters in the game. Like watch this at bat. The count was 2-0. As soon as they turn around, next pitch, he just freaking hammers one uh, for a home run. The guys were like, did you rewind it? Like what, what was – did you just call? I was like, no, like I literally just said, this is the best hitter in the game or one of the best hitters in the game. And he just wallops went out of the park. So it's very good timing. Thank you, Jordan, for making me look like a genius. Yeah, well, that came against yet another Rose Rotation co-host and Chris Bassett. <laughs> probably predicted it because of the numbers Jordan has against him. <laughs> He's now eight for 18 with five homers. So he hit that monster shot. And then later in the game, Bassett's walking off back toward the Blue Jays dugout. And he had an interaction with Jordan where basically he's saying, like, what the fuck can I throw you? Like, like enough, please. What am I going to do to get you out? Bassett, if you know him just a little bit, is an intense competitor. Like, yes, he, he is. loves – a lot of guys love to win, but he knows that he's not throwing the ball 96 or 97. He's talked about that on our show. So he has to really work to get guys out, including the best hitters in the game like Jordan Alvarez. I actually appreciated it a little bit that he kind of took a second and was like, I, like, you own me. I'll figure it out, but you own me. Everybody has those guys. Pitchers have the hitters they can't get out. Hitters have the pitchers they can't touch. Like, it's just – it's the way baseball works. So, yeah, if, there really is probably nothing that Chris Bassett can do. Jordan just sees the ball well coming out of his hand. You know what he could do? You know that, like, clip where Greg Maddox says Barry Bonds is the easiest uh, – player to pitch right. to because he would just walk him like that's kind of what you got to do i mean there's just nothing that chris bassett can throw up there that Jordan doesn't see well and i'm not knocking chris it's just part of the game guys just have those players they see the ball well against or don't see the ball well against by the way i should answer my own question here i too will go with aaron judge the only reason i think you wouldn't select judge is if you think he's going to miss substantial time i don't want to even put that out there in the baseball universe i don't like to do that so I'm going to pick Aaron Judge because he is going to stay healthy and play at least 150 games. Uh, we are now eight days away from some history here at baseball today. We are coming to you live in Los Angeles. It's a tandem of Ploof and Rose together at Boomtown Brewery. That was our all-star venue from a few years ago. If you visited us there, it'll happen before the Padres take on the Dodgers on Friday, April 12th. Now, VIP tickets are already sold out, but that doesn't mean you can't join us. Still plenty of general admission tickets. That'll uh, mean you open the doors at 5 o'clock. On top of that, if you plan on going to the game, there is a free Dodger Stadium Express shuttle. It's within walking distance of the venue if you're going there after the game. So what do you get to see? You get to see the first ever live edition of baseball today, a Q&A. Plus, you can hang out with us. Uh, you know, there's a bar there. You want to grab a drink, whatever. Tickets can be purchased at shop.johnboymedia.com. We cannot wait to see you there because we need this to be successful. The more success we have, the more likely we are to take it around the country. We want to see our good friends up close and personal. That is the fun, fun thing. All right, let's move on to the East Coast where the Orioles and Royals waited about five hours before first pitch because of a nasty storm out there on the East Coast. The team with a ton of young talent out there got one of their grizzled vets to come through. Pitch. McCann, left side, base hit, Mountcastle ties it, Mullins will win it! Nice job by James McCann, who is still very much on the New York Mets payroll, by the way. <laughs> My question is this with the Orioles. They're coming off a 100-win season. They've got all these young studs, including a bunch of guys who continue to do massive damage in the minor leagues. Are they better set up for a five-year run at the major league level than any team out there right now? Uh, this was the tough question for me today, Chris. You always give me one tough one that makes Good. me really think and kind of pisses me off a little bit. I will say this. There's a bunch of teams that are really well set up uh, for the next five years. And a bunch of other teams besides the Orioles that have ownership that has proved they'll go out and – you know, spend and bring guys in uh, to fill holes in their roster. So we really haven't seen that from the Orioles until they brought in Corbin Burns this year. So I think my caveat is I would say they're one of the teams because a lot of their stars are like ARB eligible, pre-ARB eligible. So 
they're still cost controlled. Now they're going to have to fix that. They're going to have to figure some things out. It wouldn't surprise me if this ownership is going to, you know, do the right thing. If we saw a lot of these guys sign, you know, extensions and, you know, so they're really cost controlled for the next 10 years. They have a lot of guys that are up for something like that. So if they take care of that business and then prove that they'll bring the payroll to where like it should be, then they're one of the teams. Uh, that could be the best setup for the five next five years. I mean, the Dodgers are really set up for the next five years. The Braves are really set up for the next five uh, five years. The Rangers are really set up for the next five years. I mean, you really go around the league, and those ownerships have proven they're willing to spend to fill holes. I got to see the Orioles' new ownership do that. I believe they're headed that way. Um, but until I see that, I'm going to say no. I, I still think it's the Dodgers. I really do. And like, I know everyone's like, you guys are on the Dodgers. Well, for good reason. I mean, go look at their roster, who they have locked up. They have some young pitching that's like, they have Bobby Miller, who's going to be an ace, uh, who is still making the league minimum. So like they're set up as well. And I just think that they've proven that they're willing to go out and make those moves. I mean, think about the pitching the Dodgers have locked up. Otani, Glassdale, Yamamoto, Bobby Miller, you know, a couple other guys that we can see at Gavin Stone. So I just – I'm still going to go with them over the Orioles. The Orioles have a shot if the new ownership proves willing to go out and fill holes via free agency and trades. Yeah, you're talking about uh, David Rubenstein, who is from Baltimore and just purchased the team officially last week. Um, I love some of his quotes. He said, my job is to help with the business side of the organization. My modus operandi is to do that as opposed to saying, hey, this player isn't good. You should trade for this guy. So he's like, okay, I'm here for financial backing. Other than that, you're really not going to hear from me unless I go around the stadium and go buy beers for everybody like he did uh, last week. Um, I One other touch, just very quickly on the Baltimore Orioles, where I know that you guys are obviously super excited about your team. But a little thing that may have slid under the radar yesterday was the fact that I mentioned it was a five-hour delay. Usually we don't have five-hour delays. Usually it's like two hours and they bang the game and I'll see you at another time. Not only did they wait and play the game, which is tough on fans, they recognized how difficult it was. They announced that you will get a ticket to a future game, a Monday through Thursday game, somewhere down. It's the right thing to do, and they did it, and I like that. And I think what it means is we don't have to talk shitty about Orioles' ownership, and I think that this guy is going to supply the money, and I don't think that he's going to come out like the previous ownership did and say, well, if you want us to keep these young guys, we're going to have to raise ticket prices, which is the last thing any Orioles fan wanted to hear uh, during their first 100-win season since 1980. So I think this guy's going to do it right. I do believe in him. We know about all the guys who are up here, you know, with, with Gunner obviously leading the way and Adley being here and Westberg and Kowser and Grayson Rodriguez and then you know, Jackson Holiday and Jerstead, who had 10 RBIs last night. And they're yeah, the entire there. Norfolk roster. Just bring them I mean, up. Right. So it's all there. I do want to see them trying to add more pitching through free agency, through some trades and guys they might extend somewhere down the line. Answer the question, C. Rose. That's what you would say. With all me. that being said, I would pick the Atlanta Braves. I picked the Atlanta Braves because. Acuna, Ozzy, Riley, Strider, and Harris are all 27 and younger. All of them. You are not going to find a more accomplished core at the major league level. You don't have to project. It's already been done. Yeah. These, these are dudes, and they're all 27 and younger, which means I get them from till they're 32. Like that's Mookie Betts's age right now. That's I knew you were going to point to edge, so I, I will give you that. Like the the Braves have more players controlled that are probably in their you know, quote unquote peak years. Uh, I, I did the Dodgers roster: Mookie's through twenty thirty three, Glass now twenty eight, Freddie twenty eight, Shohei thirty four, Yamamoto thirty five, Miller thirty, Smith thirty four. Uh, you know, pick your poison, dude. Like, there's some really good organizations right now that are set up in the future. Very much so. Very very much so. I love it. All right, I want to get on to my friends at Mova Globes. They've been making these rotating globes that are constantly in motion. They are powered by ambient light. I've got mine right here. It's not spinning because I've been how having... Does it, how does ambient light turn this thing? Come on, guys. What are we doing here at Mova Globes? 
It'll turn. It'll turn. It, it, it's, it's, it's turning right behind me. I'm just saying they're mad scientists or something. I know. It's crazy what they end up doing. Like, if you're always saying, well, I, you know, I don't know what to get my dad. I don't know what to get my friend because they have everything. Well, if they're a baseball fan, go get them their favorite team logo in a rotating MOVA globe. It's one of those things where you stare at it for like 90 seconds. And before you know it, 20 minutes has gone by because you're like you're mesmerized. They actually have hidden magnets. They provide movement, so there's no batteries. There's no messy cords. They're available in over 40 designs, including sports and world maps and outer space and famous artwork and much more. And they are an official MLB partner, which means that MOVA is proud to present this unique baseball memorabilia. It's perfect for both the baseball classic collectible enthusiast and devoted fans as well. And now they've doubled their output. There are a dozen major league teams that have globes available. That includes the Yankee fans for all you talking Yanks fans out there. And 30 teams are coming your way next month. Also, enjoy 10% off all officially licensed MLB MOVA globes when you use the code BT10. That is BT10. Go order your globes now with the link in the description. Tell us how much it has calmed your life. Magnets and ambient light. What the? What are we doing? I like it. I mean, oh, I love it, Chris Rose. I'm just trying to wrap my head around it, and I can't. Wrap your head around this. It hasn't been the greatest start this season for the San Diego Padres, but they did salvage something in their series against the St. Louis Cardinals on uh, Wednesday. Um, Joe Musgrove pitched his best game of the year, and then they eventually turned it over to Robert Suarez, who picked up the five-out save. And listen to what Joe Musgrove had to say about that. Having a closer that you can go out there and rely on for more than just three outs is, is huge to us here. So, Oh, is that a shot at former teammate Josh Hader, or is he just making a point that most closers will only work one inning? I would say that I think it was just more of a pat on the back to Suarez than a shot at anybody else. I do truly believe that. He's just trying to pump his guy up because – all right. No shots fired at the guys that want to take the ball, just have a clean inning and get three outs. But when you're out there doing your best, especially as a position player, you're playing every freaking day and you're playing nine innings and uh, you got a guy saying he only wants to play a specific part of the game, it does rub you wrong sometimes. There's no doubt about it. Um, you know, as a starter, you know how I feel at starters, but like they're out there trying to go as long into the game as possible. Uh, so like if you have a guy that, you know, is always saying, I just want to do one certain thing and, and won't be flexible for your team. It, sometimes it can rub you the wrong way. No matter how good they are, no matter how, how good of a person they are, no matter how good of a teammate they are. It's like, dude, like we're out here doing this. Can't you make an adjustment and do it too? We're trying to win ball games. We're a cohesive team out there. So I could see how that might be in some of the Padres players' minds. Uh, I don't think they have they any disdain for Hader. we just I don't think I don't think it's disdain for Josh Hader whatsoever. I think that yesterday was more of a pat on the back for Suarez, but it still could be in the back of your mind because it, it like I said, man, it 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 does rub you the wrong way when a guy's not willing to do something that everybody else is doing. Ploof, last year down the stretch, particular game against the Giants, they needed Hater at a time, and he was not available. There was a big to-do about it. They had to ask Bob Melvin about it. He said, listen, we know what the deal is. We know what the deal is. This isn't anything new. We know what the deal is. So here you are in the final few weeks of the year in a must-win game, and everybody's pulling this direction. And Josh Hader, and I don't necessarily blame him, because, and he actually came out and admitted it. He was like, I'm about to be a free agent. I uh, Guys who get overused get hurt and broken down. And if you get hurt and you're broken down, you are not going to get paid. I want to get paid the one time I'm going to have a shot at this. So I actually appreciated his honesty. Sure. Once again, I tell you this all the time. I don't care as somebody who's covered the game for 30 years. I don't care as a fan what, what people say, what players say, or what decisions they make, the impact it has on us. I don't care about that. I care about the impact it has inside the clubhouse. And I do think that Joe Musgrove gave us a little glimpse into how frustrating it was for all the Padres last year to have to deal with this. Sure. Like he, 
one hundred percent with with context and understanding the background of the situation, it could seem like a shot. I don't think Joe Musgrove was up there like I'm going to take a shot at Hater right now. You know, in this press conference, that I agree I think, with. I think it was more like, hey, look at our guy doing it. Like he did a great job today, picking us up. You know, getting the d- big double play and then you know like finishing the game off. Uh, but because we know what happened last year and who was there last year, obviously the the context matters so like yeah like it was what's it called like an errant like a friendly fire like he didn't mean to do it but he did it because of the situation last year yeah it feel it feels like hater got caught in the wash um but as i said sure i do think that it was it's probably a scar that still is visible for him and for some of those padres it's it's tough man like he like I said, like you're out there on a grind through 162, and like you just all want to be on the same page. You want to you you want to be working as hard as everybody else. You want to be giving you know everything you can to the team. You know, playing through some injuries. You know, even guys that like you know take days off against tough right-handers. I used to hate that. I never got a day off against a tough right hander. I wish I wish I did. Now looking back at it, uh, but there were some guys that kind of like got that special treatment. Oh, it's a tough one. Like let's sit these guys out. And it wasn't really like a platoon issue, at least when I was playing, because that was sort of a thing, sort of not a thing. Um, right. But you're like, dude, like get in the game, man. Like you just want to be that cohesive team. So yeah, I mean, there's definitely that aspect to it, Chris. Hey, last point, and then we got to move on. What's one of the most indelible marks for the Boston Red Sox during their most recent World Series championship in 2018? It's Nathan Avaldi taking that ball in extra innings in a game that they eventually lost because Max Muncy clicked him in inning 18, but he was out there for yes half the game, it felt like, yes, and got yes. a standing ovation from his teammates when he got back to the clubhouse after they lost a World Series game. Why? Because he was available. He was there. He didn't give a shit about anything else other than trying to do whatever he could to help that. And that's something that'll stick in your brain forever. Yes. All right. Congratulations to the Miami Marlins making a little history. Oh, this is bad history. I'm sorry. I should not be celebrating this at all. First team that follows up a playoff appearance with an 0-7 start. In fact, our buddy Ken Rosenthal from The Athletic, he reported they could be an early seller. So, Ploof, is this, is this just a horrible start for the fish, or does it already feel like a huge step backward in 2024 that they might not be able to recover from? Let me start with saying you just have done now twice uh, what Musgrove did to Hader. You've done to a specific Marlin player. That's twice now. I did not. That was I'm – re- I'm merely reporting facts <laughs> on this show. Okay. Are they sure. only seven? Okay. That's that's what I'm doing. I'm not celebrating it. I don't feel good about it. What was the question again? Is this a, a setback or what? Like it's 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 a it, disaster. It, it's a, it's a disaster. Start. It's okay. a disaster in Miami right now. It really is. I feel I feel for like a lot of the guys on the team that are you know putting their best foot forward, and I feel for Skip, and I feel for my guy John Jay out there. Uh, but when you start the season, your calling card is your pitching, right? When you start the season, you got Sandy out, Yuri Perez out, Braxton Garrett out, Edward Cabrera out. I mean, that's difficult for any team to weather a storm like that when four of your top pitchers are out. Like, that's going to put you in a hole no matter what. And then we know the offense wasn't necessarily, you know, a big part of it, but, you know, let's let's get the ball rolling. We trade for Josh Bell. We trade for Luis Arise. Let's get these guys going. Chris, right now. They don't have a single guy. I know. I know it's a week into the season, so you can you say small sample size, but small sample sizes work both ways. If you got one good game in this week, your numbers are going to be fine. Chris, they don't have one player with an OPS plus over eighty-five. Oh my god! The Thanks. entire roster, and that's Nick Gordon, my guy from the Twins. Like this is a, it's it is it's bad right now, Chris. And it wouldn't surprise me, yeah, if they were going to start slanging some dudes uh, from the roster. I mean, they did bring in a new GM, uh, Peter Bendix. He's from the Rays, um, so like it's not like they're going to go and start adding players via trade or free agency. I mean, they're they're going to set up their team for the future because this year already seems like a a wash or just a. See you later. Wow. Saying it's a wash a week into the year. I don't even think. Chris, I'm... when are we going to get these pitchers back? Well, 
so when are we gonna when are we gonna start hitting? What do we hit last year? I understand some of them. Did they make any moves, significant the changes to the roster from last year? No, they brought in Tim Anderson. That was their only major league contract I, they gave. I hear you. I hear you an awful lot here, loud and clear. Uh, to me, it's interesting, right? You, you said, well, who the hell can survive when you lose four of your the five guys in your rotation? Jesus Lazardo is the only dude there, and he hasn't been pitching great so far. It's interesting. If you look at the rest of their rotation right now, it's Puck, Weathers, Trevor Rogers, and Max Meyer, right? All four of those guys were first-round picks, and some of them top 10 picks. I think three of the four of them were top 10 picks. So these are guys now they've been, some of them have been on other rosters with other organizations that have made their way here. So that means that they're still trying to find their way at the major league level. This is an amazing opportunity for these dudes. It really is. Like it is a great opportunity to show that you were worthy of that selection and go out and get it. Like we'll see what you're all about. I kept hearing about all the amazing leadership that's going on here. Let's see what you're all about. Let's go. We're giving you an opportunity. You're zero and seven. Go dig out of the hole if you can. Okay, so I mean, are you call? Are they going to be in competition for a wild card spot this year, Chris? No, but I didn't. I didn't have them that way at the beginning of the year. Now, did I think that they would fall to a seventy win team? I still think they're going to be better than that. I think. I think they're low water mark, assuming they don't trade everybody early. Meaning, like in June, Luis arises hitting for the San Diego Padres or something. I think their low water mark is 75, 76 wins. That's the floor? I think so. You're crazy. You're crazy. You think it's lower than that, huh? Yes. Wow. Okay. Let me see. I'm, I'm getting our uh, my, our over-under yeah, picks. We got to what I, what I did right now. Let me see. What do you got? 78 and a half was a DraftKings over-under that we did our, our, our pick with. We all went under. Mm. Jimmy well, Jake 75 is under 78 and a half. I think so I think the floor right is in the 60s, Chris. Woo! I think they have a chance to lose 100 games this year with what's going on Damn. with you know if they do entertain trades, a lot of unproven pitchers there. It's difficult. And I'll leave it at this. Just be careful who you roast on big time podcasts. Bad juju. It's your Bad fourth juju. time. Hey, I want to tell you about, speaking of big podcasts, a new podcast and video series you're not going to want to miss. It is called The Deal, which is co-hosted by Alex Rodriguez. Chris, thank you very much. I'm very excited. Uh, every week, I hang out with Bloomberg reporter Jason Kelly. Uh, we speak with big-time athletes. We've already talked to Maria Sharapova, uh, Michael Strahan, uh, my good friend Derek Jeter. I used to play next to him on the Yankee infield. So make sure you check out The Deal. It takes you behind the scenes into the world of sports, Media, entertainment, dives into the wins and losses, the lessons learned along the way. He's learned a ton of them, right? He was the number one overall pick in the draft, had immediate success in Seattle, signed the richest deal in Major League history, gets traded, eventually struggles a little bit in New York with the fan base who expected him to be the greatest thing ever, does eventually win a World Series, ends up being suspended. He works his way back to be one of the faces of baseball. So it, he has had ups and downs, and he is not afraid to share the story. So make sure you check out the deal from Bloomberg Podcast and Bloomberg Originals. You can listen to the deal on Apple, on Spotify, or wherever you download your podcast. So enjoy it. All right, before we get out of here, Reds win a series in Philly. Boy, the weather was nasty for those three days. Just horrible. Frankie Montas, though, I think the big story, certainly yesterday, he has now uh, allowed just one earned run in his two starts, totaling almost 12 innings. Because of the injuries that he has had recently and the inconsistency, how shocked are you with his start? And let's go quickly on this one. Well, I mean, he says he's fully healthy, and we've seen what this guy can do when he's fully healthy. He's got that fastball. He can ride up there, upper 90s, top of the zone. He's got a great splitter, a couple other complimentary pitches that he throws off. So, uh, he's shown that he's able to do it at the big league level before. And, you know, sometimes when guys get injured and it's a couple years where they're not feeling right, we have a little bit of recency bias and forget what kind of pitcher they can be. Frankie Montas has came, come to Cincinnati, kind of like bought into the program. He's around a bunch of young guys, kind of giving him some juice again. If he's healthy, as, as healthy as he says he is, and he looks really, really good, Chris, right now, like I don't think we should be that shocked, to be honest with you. I think it was the money that shocked us more than anything, not the opportunity. 
we thought maybe a guy bouncing back from basically a year and a half without throwing a pitch or at least a year, um, maybe a one year, eight, nine million dollar deal. He got in the mid teens, which is great for him. But I think I think that was the surprising thing. Um, he I, it's been it feels like it's been so long since he's been good. It has been three years, like 2021 was the last time he was dominant. And you were like, oh, man, that's going to be a great trade piece. And then he gets to New York and doesn't work out. 2022, yeah. he was good with Oakland, though. And then he went to New yes, York. He and... did start out. Yes. Yeah. But it still it feels like it's been a decade, even yeah. though it obviously hasn't been a decade. But it just feels that way. Um, good for him. He's rediscovering himself. I know that Reds fans and other baseball fans have been having fun on social media saying it. I love the way that he's following the Sunny Gray model to a T where you go from Oakland, you go to New York, doesn't oh, yeah. exactly work out there perfectly. And now you go on to Cincinnati, which means that we'll see him in Minnesota next year. I love that. And then signs of rich deal with the St. Louis Cardinals. So it should work out perfectly. So good for him. Um, don't forget to go get your tickets for uh, Boomtown Brewery a week from Friday. Shop.johnboymedia.com. General admission are still available. Go check out your Mova Globes. Uh, Joe, go check out the deal on Bloomberg Sports. One thing you will not be able to check out Friday is us live. We have to tape tonight's edition after all the games are over. It will be out for early consumption via YouTube and wherever you download your podcast. So we're not missing a show on Friday. It just means that if you join us live, take a breather. We'll see you on Monday. So thanks as always for Dan's fault. It's producer Dan. It's, it's not his fault. Dan oh, is not? always available, always available. He's got something going on, and so we are making the adjustment for him. I we don't love you, Dan. I'm just messing extra, with you, bro. He's got to get an extra pump in at the gym. If he has to go pray to his uh, Aaron Judge poster, I don't know what he's doing. I don't ask. I love Dan, but I don't ask one damn thing about what's going on in his life outside of work because answer might scare the shit out of me. But we will do whatever we can because we're a team here. So uh, thanks to our one-of-a-kind producer, Dan Rourke, and the uber-talented Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. We will see you Friday on Baseball Today.